Our next speaker is Dr. Julius Birnbaum. He's Associate Professor of Medicine, Division of Rheumatology. He's also Associate Professor of Neurology at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Uh, he has received his medical degree at Columbia, his residencies in internal medicine at uh, Jacoby Medical Center in the Bronx, and then neurology at Mount Sinai. He was a fellow in rheumatology at Johns Hopkins. Um, he's the only physician in the U.S. who is certified in neurology, rheumatology, internal medicine. Uh, with Dr. Curry, he's pioneered a clinic at the Transverse Myelitis Center, and uh, he's dealing with a lot of uh, neurological diseases re re related to autoimmune, particularly uh, lupus and Sjogren's for us. And he's going to talk about neurological complications of lupus and Sjogren's syndrome. No, so thank you very much. It's a pleasure to uh, be here. So we're going to talk for the next 45 minutes or so about the uh, neurological complications of lupus and uh, Sjogren's. So this is the uh, broad uh, overview. We're going to first uh, try to focus on the spectrum of both peripheral and central nervous system manifestations of Sjogren's. We're going to try to establish that there's somewhat of a dialect between Sjogren's and lupus and try to move back between each of these disorders because I think it highlights mechanisms which are both unique to and different between these disorders. Um, what I really want to impart to you more than focusing on each of these entities is how to develop more of a standardized diagnostic approach that you could use with some pliability, regardless of what the underlying neurological manifestations is. And then finally, we're going to focus on how we could use syndromes as prisms to understand mechanisms. So not just a neurological examination for the purpose of localizing the lesion, but how to understand a neurological examination so it's a platform for understanding mechanisms. Because with mechanisms, you could um, develop a rational plan. So these are some questions you'll be able to answer at this talk. By the end of this talk, I think that you will be able to handle neurological complications of lupus and Sjogren's much more uh, ably than your neurology counterparts. Because there's a lot of vagaries that I think um, are not actually that uh, complex. So we'll try to understand which of the neuropsychiatric syndromes um, occur earlier into onset of lupus. And if they do, why do they have a better prognosis? Um, a really key feature is how do we understand when confronted with a patient with a neurological disease when to institute uh, immunosuppressive versus symptomatic therapy. Differential diagnosis is always important in neurological syndromes. You always have to uh, take the bull by the horn and try to disentangle whether a syndrome is due to the autoimmune diathesis or a non-rheumatic uh, syndrome. So how do we do that? We'll, develop a very focused plan for that. And then finally, I really want to get into this thorny problem of how to distinguish when a demyelinating syndrome is due to multiple sclerosis versus a manifestation of rheumatic disease. So let's start with uh, case one. So this is a 55-year-old uh, woman with well-established Sjogren's, and she has an autonomic neuropathy. So, so she comes into the uh, office with the following uh, complaints. So this is what she says, and you just take it vernacular. She's complaining of buzzing over her left breast. She's complaining that someone's sticking an ice pick between my ears. And we get further descriptions of caterpillars with sharp claws crawling over my thighs. And finally got popsicles dragging over my calves. So I always say, you know, you, you, this, and I think a lot of you who take care of Sjogren's patients, um, this type of lyricism is not uncommon, and your perspective on it changes, and you're, you either admire it as poetry if it's 8 a.m. <laughs> if it's 5 p.m., it's a headache. So how, how do you go about thinking about this? Well, so, you know, she's referred, so she has um, an EMG nerve conduction and no objective evidence, and she's referred for further evaluation. So this, this is her... Um, examination. Well, she's got normal strength and power. Um, what I will describe as larger fiber nerves, these are myelinated nerves. Um, they're intact because you can test that simply by tuning fork, vibration, and proprioception. But if you actually examine the smaller fiber nerves and you take the time to pull out a pinprick and actually probe over the caterpillars and probe over the, uh, the popsicles, 